Welcome to ETAP's video tutorial on DC Arc Flash. In today's agenda, we will be going over the calculation of the incident energy, how to configure ETAP 11.1 .1 to determine whether or not you are dealing with an enclosed or open air equipment, and we will finalize this presentation by explaining how to utilize the DC Arc Flash Report Analyzer. As can be seen, once you know the arc voltage and arc current, it is just a matter of multiplying by the arc duration to determine the actual energy released by the arc. Depending on the type of enclosure, whether it be open air or enclosed configurations, we can determine the amount of energy exposure towards the individuals working on that equipment. In this case, we see two sets of equations that are used for both the Stokes and Oppenlander and Pockert method. One describes the arc as a spherical release of energy in all directions, where D describes a working distance from the actual arc location. In this case, equation EB with some additional correction factors K and A will provide the user with the energy and enclosed configuration. Before we can predict the incident energy in an enclosed configuration, let's first talk about parameters K and A, which come from a specific model provided in one of the reference materials in NFPA 70E 2012. The optimum values of A and K were developed by R. Wilkins. These values were determined for three specific classes of equipment in IEEE 1584 and are related to the dimensions of the boxes used to represent the specific equipment classes. Once you know the appropriate size of the enclosure, one can determine the appropriate K and A factors which will allow you to calculate the amount of energy from those equations. Let's go back into ETAP and double click on any of the bus locations that we have faulted. In this case, we will select the DC MCC bus. In the DC Arc Flash Parameters page, we can define the type of equipment that we will be using. In this case, we will select the bus to be a panel board. Once we have done that, we can edit the parameters such as the width, the height, the depth, and the A and K correction factors. These are the parameters that are used to determine the incident energy. As an example, let's first run an arc flash analysis utilizing the Stokes and Oppenlander method. Here you can see that the incident energy is 1.77 calories per centimeter squared. When we change the equipment type from a panel board to a low voltage switchgear, we will see that the values for the reflectivity coefficient will change. These changes will be reflected in the amount of incident energy released. If we run the study one more time, we will notice that the results have increased in comparison to the results from the previous study. These results stay consistent with the equations that we have previously mentioned. Next we would like to show you the report analyzer. This analyzer is similar to the AC Arc Flash report analyzer. You can see that ETAP can look at all the individual fault locations and tell you what the incident energy will be at each fault location. It can also tell you what the worst case scenario will be for those locations. As soon as we select the worst case option, we will see that the maximum power method consistently predicts the highest amount of energy throughout the system. If we wanted to see which one of the methods released the least amount of energy, we would select the minimum option. In this case, we will see that the Pockert and the Stokes and Oppenlander methods 
are less conservative but are probably more accurate than the maximum power method. You can also filter reports by the results. For instance, if you wanted to see which fault clearing time could not be calculated, or which fault clearing times have exceeded the maximum default time, ETAP provides the user with those options located here. Just like the AC report analyzer, we can create labels and reports for each location. In this case, we will select DC bus 3. At the bottom right hand corner of the window, we have the option of creating a custom label or a standard label. In this case, we will select a standard label. The standard label that we will be selecting is the 4x6 warning 1 dash bus label. Here is the DC arc flash label which contains your shock hazard voltage which is 125 volts DC. Your limited, restricted, and prohibited approach boundaries are also determined from NFPA 70E 2012. These boundaries are appropriate for DC equipment because ETAP has added a new table for that standard that covers those boundaries for DC equipment. With that being said, this concludes ETAP's video tutorial on DC ArcFlash.